Hi, in this video, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you get better at math. I'm going to give you five real things that you can do that will make you better at math. If you follow these things, you will get better. It will help you. It works. One thing you want to remember, though, before you watch this video, is that nobody cares more about your success than you. Think about that, right? Your success helps you. So why should anyone care more about your success than you? It follows that you should be responsible for your own success. And the reason is, by taking responsibility for your own success, you can choose to guarantee your own success. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that's what I did. When I first went to college, before I took my very first class, I told myself it was up to me, right? You cannot let someone else determine your future. Only you can determine your future. So make it happen. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is focus on your class notes. This is super important. Notes are everything. Hopefully you have some really, really good notes. You might not have good notes. You're gonna get a mix in college, you know. I've kept all my notes. I've rewritten most of them. Um, I've got some really good ones. <laughs> I've got some great ones over here in a binder. They're awesome. And I've got some that are just not good. As a concrete example, when I was taking abstract algebra in graduate school, my teacher would just like doodle all over the board and he would just gloss over stuff because it is a graduate class. There's no time to explain everything. So I would go home and I would sit down and it would take me somewhere between, I would say 60 minutes and three hours to go over most of it and understand most of it. There was always some holes and gaps that I didn't quite get. I would do research online, try to fill in those gaps. I couldn't always do it, but I understood most of it. So after every class, whether it be online or face-to-face, -face, go over your notes, rewrite your notes, take some time for your notes and really focus on your notes. It's super important. If you think about it, teachers only have a limited amount of time to convey the knowledge to you, right? I mean, when I go into a classroom, I only have an hour and 15 minutes or two hours or however long the class is to convey the information to my students. So I have to make sure that I give them the examples they need and the theory they need so that they can actually do the homework and do well on the test. That's what it's all about, right? Having them succeed. And your teacher probably feels the same way, right? He wants you to succeed. So those notes are everything, right? Really go over those notes, rewrite them, go over them as many times as it takes. If you don't understand your notes, ask your teacher. But at the end of the day, there's always going to be some things you don't understand. The second thing you should really focus on is the homework problems. And by this, I mean not just doing the homework, but doing them at least twice. That's right. So what I would do is I would finish my homework at least a few days before it was due. I wasn't like, you know, an overachiever. I, I, I would never have it done a week early. I was always trying to get it done a week early, but it's not going to happen, right? I, you know, I like video games. I like pizza. You know, I like doing other stuff too. So um, I was always a few days early, but never like, I wasn't that guy who was done a week early. So get it done before it's due so you can go back and you can go over it again. And the way you go over it again is you look at the problem and if there's any doubt, like if you have any doubt on how to do it, write it out. And you wanna make sure that you can do every single homework problem without looking at your notes. That's the goal, right? If you can do every single homework problem without looking at your notes, you're gonna do awesome, right? That's the key and that's where you wanna be. The problem is it takes people a long time to get there. It's very easy for me to tell you to do this, and it's a different story when you try to do it yourself because it takes time. So that's why the notes came first, right? Because you go over your notes first, and in theory, the notes should make the homework problems a little bit more doable. The third thing you want to do is get a book to do problems. So I picked this one up because it was just within arm's reach of me, and it was right over here. And this one is good for problems. It's got really, really good exercises. So if you're taking calculus and you're already using this book, get a different book. Get the one by Larson. If you're using the one by Larson, get the one by Stewart. Or maybe check out the one by Thomas. 
it doesn't matter, but just get an additional book to the one you already have, and then do problems from that book as well. And the reason is this, a lot of times, some teachers, especially in the higher level classes, the ones that involve proofs, what they'll do is they'll take problems that are very common, and oftentimes those problems are not assigned in the homework, or they're found in other books. So if you build a collection of books, and you do problems from other books, it helps a lot. This is especially useful in graduate school or in proof-based classes. If you're taking calculus uh, or just differential equations, typically if you just do the problems from your textbook and you actually do all of those, that in theory should be enough. But once you get to like the proof-based classes like advanced calculus or some analysis, that's when you really wanna start doing problems from different books. That's one of the reasons I have so many books, right? It's because when I was studying, I would do problems from every book. When I was doing uh, analysis, I would do problems from the Fitzpatrick book. Uh, I would check out the Bartle and Sherbert book from the library, do problems from that. I would do problems from the Ross book. You know, I would do problems from Kaplan or just different books that I had. So it helps to have different books to do problems from. The next thing you wanna focus on is something that you might not be able to do. It depends on your class and the structure of your class. It's to focus on the review. So some classes have reviews and some don't, right? Different teachers are different and they have different philosophies for doing things differently. If you have a review, so if you're in a situation where your professor says, hey, here's 40 questions, uh, do these in order to prepare for the test, or hey, um, today we're gonna go over these 25 questions, you know, make sure you can do these to prepare for the test. Really focus on that, right? Anything the teacher says, whether it be in note form or in review form or in homework form is absolutely critical. You're noticing a pattern now, right? Homework is assigned by the teacher. The notes are created by the teacher. Reviews are created by the teacher, right? Really, that's all that matters. It's what your teacher is trying to convey to you because that is likely going to be very similar to what's on your exam. The last thing you should do is just a general thing, and it's more of a time management thing. So watching math videos is great. Reading math books is great. You should keep doing those things as long as you don't sacrifice doing math problems. You wanna make sure you're doing a healthy amount of math problems every day. So what's, what's a healthy amount? I would say if you're taking a calculus class, I would say at least 20 a day, I think 20 is a good amount. You can get like a little timer and set the timer for an hour and just see how many you can do in a single day, right? Do as many as you can. Do problems. If you're taking a proof-based class like advanced calculus or abstract algebra, that's a whole different ball game, right? You can try to set numbers, but your numbers might be a lot lower than 20. Maybe try five or 10 and then do some reading as well and go over your notes. If you're struggling in math, just know you're not alone, okay? It's normal. It's hard for everyone. Don't give up, keep trying, and follow these things. I hope some of them will help you. Good luck and take care.